Amen. How many of you ready for the word this morning? Amen. Praise God. It's so awesome to be in the house of God. Again, amen. Praise God. Good to see you out, amen, in the house of God. If you have your Bibles, come with me, amen, to Hebrews chapter 10, amen. Hebrews chapter 10, amen. Hebrews chapter 10, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, God. amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Are you with me? Amen. Let us hold fast. All right. Tell somebody to hold fast. Hold fast. Yes, Lord. How many of you know we need to hold fast in these last yes, and yes, evil days? Come on, somebody. Amen. Paul is, amen. I believe it's Paul, but the author of this book, amen, mm -hmm. is saying, let us hold fast. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, hold fast. Hold fast. Hold fast. Hold fast. The profession of our faith. Come on, somebody. Amen. Without wavering. Amen. For he is faithful. Come on, somebody. Amen. That promised. Come on, somebody. That, that's a, that'll preach all by itself. But that's not what Pastor Gore. But that'll preach all by itself. Said, let us hold fast. Come on, somebody. Amen. But I like the next one. It says, let us consider one another. Come on, somebody. To provoke unto love and to good works. And the word that stands out to me, let me finish reading this thing. I'm going to have you sit down and I'm going to get on into this. Not forsaking. Come on, somebody. The assembling. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Somebody help me. Not, let me say that one more time. Not forsaking. Right. Some folk have forsook the assembly. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. Yes, Come on now. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is. In other words, like some other folk have done. Come on, somebody. But exhorting one another. Come on, somebody. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. <laughs> Uh -huh. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of God's word and all God's children say amen. 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 In the presence of our life changing king, you may have your seat. Come on, somebody. Amen. Y'all with me? Amen. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith yeah. without wavering. Amen. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Come on, somebody. So you need to be firm in what you believe. Amen. Somebody help me up in this place. Amen. Says, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love. Amen. I told you in good works as a preacher, even as saints, as your brother, amen, we should be provoking one another, amen, it is provoke, I uh, like one of the definitions for the provoke is to call something out of you or to cause you to do something, amen, Paul is saying, or the author right here is saying that he wants us to cause each other to love, cause each other to do good works, amen, so we're here to provoke one another, amen, amen. amen. praise God, I'm here to provoke you, cause you to praise God, there should be something that causes you to praise. Come on, somebody. Something that causes you to worship. Amen. We should be provoking one another. Somebody help me. Husbands, you should be provoking your wives. Wives, you should be provoking your husband at home. Come on, somebody. In a positive way, because you can provoke somebody to do something negative. Come on. But we should be provoking people to do godly things. Amen. So we should be provoking one another. Come on, somebody. I need somebody to provoke me sometimes. Amen. When I'm feeling down and out, I need some provoking going on in my life. Amen. And I need somebody in my life that can provoke positive things to come out of me. Come on, somebody. And some of you need to get around, change your association. Somebody say amen. Because your association, amen, is what causes you to be in the state that you're in. Amen. This is not even the message that I'm preaching, but this is for somebody. Come on, somebody. You need to change your association so people, people can begin to provoke good things out of your life. Come on, somebody. And I need some 
somebody to provoke me. And the author said, provoke, provoke me to love and to do good works. Amen. So I need some provoking. If you don't need any provoking, come on, something wrong with you. How many of you need to, in other words, you need to be motivated sometimes. And how many of you need some motivation sometimes? Amen. You better help me up in this place. You get an alarm clock go off in the morning. Amen. You don't want to get up, but that paycheck provokes you to get out of that bed and get to work. Come on, somebody. You need some motivation. Come on. You need some provoking sometimes. And sometimes I just need somebody to provoke me to praise. Somebody to provoke me to worship. Somebody to provoke me to keep going on. And the provoking is at the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. I need to be provoked. And then I like what comes right after provoking me to love, Elder Johnny. Mm -hmm. Come on. And good works. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Amen. Not forsaking mm -hmm. the assembling of ourselves together. I just looked at that word as simple because I know what it means, but I, you know, I like to get these de definitions. Mm -hmm. Not forsaken, then it took me back to, I've been on this thing from when we started talking about the pool pit. Mm -hmm. But assemble means together, together. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Assemble means to bring together as in a particular place. Are y'all with me? Yes, to assemble means to bring together in a particular place. Are y'all with me? Yes, For a particular purpose. Yes, sir. Are y'all with me? Yes. To fit together the parts or connecting parts for a specific reason. Ooh, are y'all with me? So a symbol means to bring together. Church means to call you out from your homes. Oh, come on, somebody. We found out last week, church means called out once or called out from your house. Amen. Somebody help me. Amen. And when you are called out from your house, amen, praise God, the, the scripture watches, when you're called out from your house, you call to assemble together which makes you an assembly. Oh, y'all better help me. Yeah. Or, or watch this. Which makes you the church. Come on, somebody. And when you come together, amen, watch this. When you assemble together, now you become a congregation. Oh, somebody. Somebody help me. Yes, sir. You're not the church by yourself. Oh, y'all better, better help me. Now you say, you got to back up what you're saying, but look, watch this. I got to go back to last week. Can I go back to last Because well, watch this, watch this. The Bible says, amen, because I feel a preach coming on me, and I need to, and y'all need to stay with me. Y'all ready? Amen. The, the Bible says that Jacob, amen, he came to a place. What are you talking about? We're talking about the house of God, amen. amen. And, 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 and the devil is a lie, I'm going to tell you right now, amen. when he say you don't need church. Y'all better help me. The devil is a lie when he tells you you don't have to go to church. That is a lie straight out of the pit of hell. Because in order for you to congregate with somebody, you need somebody else to meet you to become a congregation. Y'all better help me. In order for you to assemble, amen, that means you have to take part in somebody else assembling. Y'all better help me. In order for you to become a congregation. So the devil is a lie, amen, when he tells you you don't need to be amongst the assembly. Why? Because you are part of the assembly. Oh, y'all better help me. Y'all better help me in this place. So watch this. Jacob comes to a place. He comes to a place. And when Jacob comes to this place, the scripture said Jacob fell to sleep. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. And when Jacob fell to sleep, the scripture said Jacob saw a ladder. Come on, somebody. Set up on the earth. Right. Are y'all with me? There was a ladder set up on the earth. There was something very important about this ladder. Come on, somebody. 
he saw this ladder at this place. Uh, and we know that a ladder gets you from one point to, to the other. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. A ladder is always going up. Come on, somebody. Come on. Amen. Somebody. But uh, what's one thing about a ladder? You can come back down. Come on, somebody. Amen. So it's a place of going up and a place of coming back down. It'll get you to one place. Come on, somebody. If you can't reach it, the ladder will get you there. Come on, somebody. Me and my wife are doing some work at the house. And man, we got a big old high wall. Come on, somebody. And there was no way we could get to that the top of that wall, the top of that wall without a ladder to come to finish the work. Y'all help me up in this. And without the ladder, the work couldn't be done. Come on. The work couldn't be complete. We can start the work, but we can complete the work. The ladder helps you complete the work. Oh, y'all ready? Y'all, 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 y'all. Are y'all ready to get somebody? If I got anybody that got the Holy Ghost up in this place, this morning, come on. Y'all stay with me. I said the ladder is ready to get you from one point to the other. Jacob saw this ladder. Mm -hmm. And he said, when I saw the ladder, I saw angels ascending. Mm. And descending upon this land. Come on, oh, come on, somebody. And then he began to say, he said, and I saw God at the top of the land. Mm -hmm. Come on now. But I, you know why God told me to preach this again? He said, because they don't get it yet. That's right. Come on, somebody. They're not getting what I'm trying to impart to them to show them how serious this is about coming together. When they come together. Wow. Oh, somebody help me. And God said, preach it again. Watch this. He said, I saw the ladder and God was at the top of the ladder. He said, and I saw angels ascending and descending from this ladder. And then he began to say, how dreadful is this place? My, my, my. Come on, somebody. Come on. In other words, this is a fearful place. This is a place where we need to reverence. Yes, yes. He said, this is a place of reverence. This place that I'm at. Yes. Come on, somebody. And then he said, this is none other than the house of God. Amen. Watch this. He said, and I knew it not, but when I saw the ladder, <laughs> the ladder was there. Now watch this. He said, this is none other than the house of God. Yes. He said, this is no longer, he said, I'm going to change the name of this place to Bethel. Yes, yes. Come, on, mm -hmm. Come on now. Bethel means the house of God. Right. Mm -hmm. We found out in Genesis, that God, now watch this, God upheld what Jacob changed. Y'all better help. Y'all better help me. Come on, I need the Bible scholars up in here. Stay now. with me. Amen. Come on. Watch this. He said, watch this. God came to Jacob and said, I am the God of Bethel. Amen. I didn't change it, you did. Come on, somebody. But I'm established and confirming what you change is of me. Why? Because you seen the ladder in that place. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jacob, see, God is establishing the church right here. Boy, y'all, boy, y'all better. Why is he establishing the church right here? Why? Because God said in the, I want you to go back and read that. God said in the same chapter, he said in the same chapter, amen, God told Jacob, he said, out of thy seed. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. He spoke it to him at church. Yeah. Wow. He spoke it to him when he saw this dream. He said, out of thy seed. Y'all looking at me oh, funny. Y'all look looking at me funny. I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to claw across this. Y'all looking at me strange. And when you look at me strange, I'm going to go to the word on you. When you look at me strange, you're going to get some word. Huh? You go, I'm going to qualify what I'm saying. Amen. 
Ah. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Ah. He said, watch this. Let me, I'm going to just read this part here. Uh, Genesis 28. Are y'all with me? Hurry. Hurry, because I got a lot to get out of me this morning. Hurry. Follow. Come on. Genesis 28 and 12. Well, let's, 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 let's start at 10. And Jacob went out from Bathsheba until toward and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of the place and put them for pillows and lay down in that place to what sleep. And he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on where? Did I say that? And it reached to the top where? But behold the angels were what? Ascending and what? And behold, the Lord stood up. What? And I am, he said, I am the Lord God of thy father. And the God of Isaac, that land, excuse me, of Isaac. The land whereon thou what? Liest. To thee will I what? And to who? And thy seed shall be what? And thou shalt spread above what? Broad to what? To the east, the north, the south. And in thee what? Your seed, all the earth shall be blessed. Not Israel. Whoop, boy, y'all, 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 y'all better get this thing, man. Not Israel. He said, all the families, yeah. all nations, yeah. in that seed, that seed is Christ. Yeah. Y'all better help me. God was establishing something. Well, this was big, what Jacob seen. God was establishing the church right here. Yeah. Whoop. Come on, Doc. Yeah. 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 Y'all better help me. And because Jacob was the patriarch, because that seed would come out of Jacob, Jacob was qualified to anoint the pillar. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My, my, my. Boy, yeah. boy, this, huh? boy y'all looking strange up in this place. I said, watch this. You getting this evil? I am so. Yes, sir, watch this. It says, because, watch this, now watch this. The pillar, watch this. It says, he says, surely the Lord is in this place. God, God said, your seed is going to be blessed. Then watch this. Then Jacob turns around and says, this is none other but the house of God. This place shall be called Bethel. Watch this. Because this is the house of God. Y'all know what I mean? And the scripture says, watch this. Watch this. Jump over to 18. No, 17. Verse 17. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. And he was what? Afraid. And said, how dreadful is what? This is none other but the what? This is the gate. Wow. What? My, my, my. <laughs> he said, the house of God is the gate of God. Right. Not the windows, it's the gate. Right. Ooh, yeah. the Come on, Man, I'm about to run up out of here. Boy. Come on, somebody. Right. Right. It's, 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 it's not the house of God, Sister Eve. It's the gate of God. He said, The house of God is the gate of God, and there's a lot of angels ascending and descending at this house. Come on, somebody. Then not only he don't stop there, he said, This is not. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this. Says and Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone. Everything is about Christ. That stone that the builders rejected. Come on, somebody. He's that stone. Come on, somebody. Watch this. Now watch this. And he had put it for his pillows. Watch this. Come on. You rest where in Christ. Christ is that stone. He rested on the stone. Christ represents that man. Come on. Huh? Somebody. When Christ put the revelation behind it, the man came to Jesus. He said, He said, I want to abide with you. He said, The Son of Man have no place to lay his head. Uh, come on, somebody. But when he ascended, come on, you got to decrease that he may increase. Woo! You got to cut off your head and let him become the head. Let him rest on you. You rest on you. He's the stone that carnality has to go. Yes. Watch this now. 
Watch this. Says, says he rose up, he took the stone, set it for a pillar, and he set it up for a what? Pillar. Mm -hmm. yes. My pillow, pillar. Yes. Come on, huh? Are y'all with me? Amen. And he poured oil on the pillar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, Come on now. Now, I'm going to bring this back together. He poured oil on the pillar. Come with me to Timothy. Now, that ain't for the day, Pastor. Something got established there Amen. that's appointed right now. Amen. Watch this. First Timothy. Boy, this word is good. See, that's why you got to study to show yourself. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. Amen. Watch this. This is good stuff, man. This is good stuff. Watch this. Uh, 1 Timothy, I'm in the wrong place, chapter 3. I was in 2 Timothy, chapter 3. 1 Timothy, chapter 3. Uh-huh, there you go, Hell, Are you with me, Hell, Angel? 15. Watch this. Are y'all with me? But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtst to behave where? In the what? Which is the what? The what? The pillar on the ground of the throne of truth. The pillar that he anointed represents the church. Okay. Come on, somebody. It represents the church. Jesus, watch this. He said, "If you have, I, I gotta bring this back to what Jesus said, uh -huh. because the church is the house of God. When you watch this, when you assemble together, Jesus didn't say where one is gathered. He said where two or three are oh, gathered yeah. together in my name, yeah. that I am in the midst." What Jesus told, Amen. He said in the book of John, He said, "Hereafter, soon after, you shall see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man." God spoke from heaven upon that ladder. Y'all better help me. That ladder is Jesus Christ. He fulfilled what was spoken. Amen. What, what, watch this. What Jacob seen, Jesus fulfilled. He seen a ladder and he seen angels ascending on, and descending God. upon this ladder. Jesus comes on the scene and he says, soon after you shall see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And God spoke from heaven to the
Just watch what he said. Woo. He said, whatsoever you bind on earth on. is bound in heaven. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. He said that to Peter. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. In the book of Matthew, then he turns around and said again. He said, look, go tell it to the church. And if they refuse to hear the church, treat them as a heathen. Get rid of them. Come on, somebody. But then he turns around and said, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Uh -huh. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loose yes. in heaven. Yes. He said, what? He said, when two touch and agree, uh -huh. touching anything that they shall act, uh -huh. it shall be Jacob 
up on anointed at that pillar. Jesus said, what? That ladder, he said, watch this. There's only one way up, one way down. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Well, I can find me to get to him. You better help me up in this place. Watch this. Now, when you're in the house of God, he said, he said when two or three are gathered together, when you gather together, watch this. God said, in the house of God, angels are a sinning and descending. Ascending and descending, binding, loosing, binding, loosing. Now watch this. You say I need to. You say I need to ask God. Yes, because watch this. Now God put it. I love the way God did it. What do we talk about first? The pulpit. Huh? Amen. Come on. They set up a pulpit. The book of Nehemiah. They set up a pulpit. The scripture says for the purpose. Uh -huh. A pulpit is to bring knowledge and understanding. He set up the pulpit to bring knowledge and understanding. Y'all yeah. better help me. See when you put these two together, man, you got some power. Come on, somebody. The pulpit, amen, was a place where he brought understanding. Amen. Ezra then brought understanding to the people. The scripture says, amen. He had six on one side and seven on the other side, including him that's. 14, a place of deliverance. Y'all better help me. It was 14 people up to the pulpit. 14 represents deliverance. Y'all better help me. Pulpit is only mentioned one time in the Bible. Y'all with me up in this place. And at the pulpit, there's deliverance. Y'all better help me. We found out in the book of Corinthians chapter 14 that there's only four things that should be coming out the pulpit. Revelation, prophecy, knowledge, and doctrine. Come on somebody. That's what comes forth out of the pulpit. Y'all with me up in this place. And Ezra means help. There's yeah. help from the pulpit. Yeah. If you got a man of yeah. God that preaches the word of God, the unadulterated word of God, you're going to get revelation. You're going to get knowledge. You're going to get prophecy. You're going to get teaching. Come on, somebody. And he's going to cause you to understand from the pulpit. As for me, help. There's help from the pulpit. Y'all better help me up in this place. But the pulpit is at the house of God. The Boy, this is some good stuff. 
And you say you don't need the house of God. Take it up with God because he established the church. No one is an island. Come on. Who can agree with you? Come on, somebody. It's all in the scripture when they came in the promised land. They said, wait a minute. We in the same place, but we have all have different parts. Oh, yeah. Ah, right. That's seven. Yeah. Say it again, Elvis. We in the same uh, land, baby. Yeah. But we got. Uh, we in the same land. Uh -huh. That's right. We in the same place. Uh -huh. But we all have a lot. Uh -huh. We yeah. all have our part. Right. Yes. But what I understand what's this, here's that provoking one another to good works. Can I, can, I, can I read this to y'all right here? I told y'all I had a lot of in me. Watch this. Come and read it. Judges. Judges. Woo, man. Judges. Boy, there's some good stuff up in here. I'm about to run up out of here. I'm about to run up out of here. I'm out of here. Watch this. Judges chapter 1. Y'all with me? Are y'all with me? Say you with me. Come on, say something. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first and fight against them? Come on, say, tell your neighbor you in a fight. You in a fight. fight. He said, Watch this. And Jesus said, The gates of hell shall not. Yeah. That means you're going to what? Win. You're going to win and you're going to do what? Fight. fight. Watch this. And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into what? Yes. His hand. Now, watch this. Judah said unto who? Come up with me into my life that we may fight against what? And, and watch this. I likewise will what? Into where? So what? And Judah went up with, and the Lord what? And who? And they what? And they what? And what? What? In the same way. Woo. Yeah. They needed help to go up and defeat their enemy. Yes. They said that if you come help us, we'll go help you. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Because watch this. You need help for your part, and I need help for my part. We need to bind and loose together. Go for the Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen nobody lead their battery at home. Guess what your car stand there too? Right. I ain't never seen nobody, hey, I'm going to drive my car to work. Babe, come pick up the battery, take it home. I'll see you later. I'll be back home later. <laughs> Guess what? You're going to be stuck where you at. Uh, and a lot of folks stuck where they're at because they won't assemble together. Huh? And you're going to say stuck at 20. Stuck at 30, stuck at 40, stuck at 50, 60, 70. Gonna be craning all stuck because you won't assemble. Uh, mm. oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Together. Come on now. Because you won't get in the assembly. Then you gonna then all you're gonna be is one of those that say, oh, well, I could have. Mm. I was anointed. I, I should have. Mm. What happened? I didn't assemble. See, when you assemble together, wow. then you can be fixed. Because when the whole, when, 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 when something goes or dysfunction on a vehicle, it goes to the mechanic. Yes. Huh. And the mechanic works on that part that's causing the whole vehicle to run kind of bad. Huh. That one little piece can call the whole engine, whole car to run back. And the mechanic, the, the Holy Ghost, get to work on that thing with the whole car. Uh, to cause it to start running good again. Come on now. Come on. But when you're at home by yourself, come on, tell it. Now you're subject to be replaced. Oh, that's the, oh, we can get you a new part. Yeah. Wow. Because you did not assemble yourself together. Boy, 
Morris. You gotta get on this symbol. Yeah, they get it. Them brothers get it. Huh? The church is a place where we you're not the church by yourself. You're the temple of God. But you're not the church. Woo, come on. Let me fix that right now. I'm the temple of you, you're not the church. You're the temple of God. Yes, your body is the temple of the living God. But when you assemble together, you establish the church. The church, when you come together, that's church. Let's have some church. Well, let's come together. Amen. And when we gather together, it's at a specific place for a specific purpose. Oh, somebody help me. Come on now. Y'all know it's always a flip side. I always close with a flip side. Huh? I always close with a flip side. The house of God. The Bible says how good it is to dwell in the midst of a multitude of counselors. But a multitude at the church. But there's also the congregation of the wicked. When they assemble together. And the reason why there's a congregation of the wicked because they got a wicked leader. Mm. Come on. Yes, sir. Wow. Come on. And God began to show me something about the dreadful and the fear. The fear and the dreadful. Jacob said, this is a fearful place. This is a dreadful place. Is y'all ready? Yeah. Here's what the Holy Ghost showed me. He said, this, he said, what Jacob said, this is a fearful and a dreadful place. In other words, you reference the house of God. Hmm. Y'all agree with it? Yeah. But he took me back to Saul. He said, this is the danger. That he lined this up with lay hands suddenly on no man. There you go. Huh. Lay hands suddenly on no man. I said, Lord, what are you trying to show me? He said, watch this. He said, Saul, when the priest helped. Mm. Oh, you, know, you already know I'm going. When the priest helped David, gave him Goliath's sword. Doeg, the Edomite, told Saul that the priest helped David. Saul comes to the priest. Remember, Jacob said, this is a fearful and dreadful place. In other words, you reverence the things of God. Amen. Saul didn't fear God. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. He didn't reverence the things of God nor the people of God. Mm -hmm. So watch this. Pastor is accountable. Mm -hmm. But so are you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. What do you mean, Pastor? Saul said, told his. Now watch this. Let me go back. Let me back track. It said that. That Doeg was the leader or the head of Saul's servants. Uh -huh. Huh? Doeg was an Edomite. He wasn't an Israelite. He was an Edomite. And he was the head of Saul's servants, which was Israelites. Mm. Ooh, boy. Boy, y'all got it. People that, that, that followed God, he placed someone over them. Uh -huh. A wicked leader over the servants of God. Woo! Come on, somebody. Then the scripture goes on. Adamite was the he, Doeg was the one that told Saul, hey, they help David. Woo, come on, somebody. So Saul comes on the scene, lay hands suddenly on no man. Saul comes on the scene. Tell your neighbor, you're accountable too. <laughs> Saul comes on the scene. He said, oh, y'all help David? He said, I want y'all. He told the servant, I want you to fall on the priest right now. Slam him with the sword. I want you to take him out. And the servants of God said, not me. Not me. I don't care who you is. I don't care what your position is. Bishop, evangelist, elder, teacher. I don't care if you wear all five of them titles. I'm not touching the people of God. Come on, Come on. I'll tell your neighbor, you accountable. 
God. Yes, sir. I don't care what that, that don't line up with the word of God, Pastor uh -huh. Timmy. Stop what you're talking about. I'm not slaying God's people. Come on, oh, man. That's good. But watch this. See, when you got a wicked leader, you don't have to follow that wickedness. You get away. But watch this. Saul take it upon himself. Well, let me just go. What was do it? I'll do it. Because I fear, I don't fear or reverence anything that's of God. You got these type of brothers in the pool. Come on. I'll slay the servants of God with the sword. But then you had them servants say, not me. Not me. You don't have to fall for that. Come on, somebody. Why, it works both ways. Saul placed this man over the people of God. And that's why the scripture says, lay hands suddenly on no man. Why? Because laying on the hands represents the transfer of the Lord. When you lay hands on somebody <coughs> in front of the congregation, what did God tell Moses? Lay hands on Joshua in front of, in front of the people. So you can transfer some honor and authority yes. on him so they can see that he's an authority. Yes. If I lay hands on a doe mm -hmm. I don't even call you doe brother. <laughs> Doc. Doc. <laughs> if I lay hands on a doe if I can't discern that doe is not of you, is not with you and not with us, I don't need to be your leader. Ah, yeah. That's good. <clears throat> If Doeg is full of witchcraft, come on somebody. Amen. A controlling spirit is witchcraft. Yes. Yes. If Doeg is full of that, full of manipulation, eyes for the women, and I don't see that, I don't need to be your leader. Then I, I lay hands on Doeg. Doeg, go ahead and counsel sister so-and-so. Now I'm in, now I'm accountable. Come on, somebody. That's why we need intercessors. Prophetic people in the ministry. That's why we need all the parts of the ministry. Yes, so we can see that, that doe egg that comes in. Come on, somebody. And recognize he's not of God. He's ready to slay the people of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. We got to watch out for Doe Head. Don't be Doc. Yes, Come sir. On. Amen. Thank God that brother's a good brother, though. Amen. Amen. Come on, move God. Amen. What am I saying? What am I saying? What am I saying? You need the house of God. Yes. You can't get help. You can't get help by yourself. You need this house. Amen. Come on. We need this house. Amen. There's a word for you every Sunday coming out of this house. Yes, Somebody yes. else. Every service. Thank you, Eva. Every service, there's something for you. Yes. Every service. Am I right about it? Yes. Every service, you get something out of this house. Yes. And the devil says, stay away. Stay like I said last Sunday, yeah, it's Jersey Sunday again because Elder didn't wear his jersey. <laughs> you want to see that red skin again? Yeah. Right. yeah. But guess what? God said, I want you to stay who you are. Because that's what will confound the people. How that brother, how that brother wear jerseys and stuff to church. Preach like he do because I spend time with God. My clothes don't make me who I am. If I want to wear a jersey every, as long as the words stay anointed on my lips. Come on, somebody. 
You got folks in, in, in a three-piece suit full of dead men bones. And people are looking at their parents. Come on, somebody. And don't care what's coming out of their mouth because they look like they're a man of God. Wow. Yes. Too many of the people of God being deceived in the churches fall for anything. <coughs> and God is raising up mighty men of God. The generation has changed. Yeah, if it worked for you, then it, work. it ain't working now. That's why God called you then. Yes. When sin about grace did much more about, don't you know sin is worse now than it was? Yeah. And God got to put great on grace on different type of pictures now yeah. for this generation. It, what you did in your generation won't work for this generation. Because when sin about grace did much yes. more about, he got to put grace on these preachers. Yes, sir. Yes. years old. She said, I started judging that gospel rap. And God said, it might didn't work for you. Hallelujah. But I got some brothers, come on somebody, I got some mighty men of God that listen to Tupac, that listen to Scarface, that listen to the Ghetto Boys, that listen, come on somebody, to UGK. And they need somebody that rap gospel to pull them out of that mess. Come on, they don't need to hear the Lord and Gay. I don't need you going to me. 
I pray they leave here. <laughs> if they don't get delivered, then leave. Because we ain't going to conform to your ways. Yes. Somebody help me. did it all. Yes, yes. You don't have to try to be holy. You are holy. Come on, son. You don't have to try to be righteousness. I am the righteousness of God. Somebody better help me. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, it's time for Saul to get out the pulpit. Come on, man. Time for Joab to get out the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Joab, come on, somebody. Yeah. All these preachers, they won't have a place. They're going to be just like Joab, going to try to run to the house of God to find safety, but it won't help them. Mm -hmm. They're going to hang on the horns of God, thinking they're going to find protection in the house of God. It won't help them. Because judgment begin at the house of God. It's time for us as a ministry to make some noise. Amen. And we make a noise. Amen. But it's time for us to stand for what's right. Let them know. You need to go to church. Why? Let them know why. <laughs> Wait, two or three are gathered, brother. The assembly is people, not yeah. one. Get excited about God. Get excited about what you have. Get excited about your church family. Get excited about your church. Yes. Thank God you have a place to assemble at. Right. Somebody help me. Yes. I close with this because this, this is in my spirit. I told Elder Jenner this morning, he started crying when I told him. Some of you need to rest. Some of you need to truly know what rest is. Because we toil too much. You're not resting. God is a supernatural God and he even rested. You need to learn what rest is. And what I told my wife this morning, I said, you know what, God dropped in my spirit. The people can't richly enjoy what they have because they're too busy trying to attain things. Come on, son. Mm -hmm. Amen. And God told me to tell you this. Your, your labor your labor is going to turn to toiling and your toiling is going to wear you out. You ain't even going to be able to finish the work because of your health. Your body heals. My, my, my wife told me that, man, and I really believe that. Your body heals when you sleep. Yes. Yes. Your body heals when you rest. And I've been going so hard, God walked over this morning, don't, that's, don't do nothing today. After you done preaching, that's it for you. Come on, that's good. That work you got to get done, going to be there tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But if you can't, if you're toiling and working so hard to where you ain't going to make it to the mall. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know how to rest. And God is telling me to tell you to rest, man. Life is more than food and bread. Life is more than things. Amen. You want to have a quality of life, not a quantity. All right. Mm -hmm. And you cannot have a quality of life laboring the way you're doing. Now that, that's that ain't there. Some of y'all need to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> but that is for somebody. Yeah. Come on, somebody. I just, I just hear that, ooh, I ain't wrestling up now. Let me go home. <laughs> let, me, let me go rest right now. No, I, 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 I can get more rest. I can't get more rest. No, 
Y'all got anything? Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. But you need your rest. You need your rest, man. And God wants you to rest. So you can get your energy and strength. God want to use you. And you need to rest. Amen. 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 Come on, give God praise in this house. Come on, give him praise.